Here we have a set of data and these, this data represents record high temperatures for each of the 50 states in degrees Fahrenheit. And we want to construct a grouped frequency distribution, also a relative frequency distribution for the data. We always start when we want to create some type of a graph by locating the smallest and the highest numbers in the data set. These numbers are all out of order, so just scan through the list and identify those two values. Looks like 100 is the smallest and 134 would be the highest. The first step for constructing a frequency distribution is to calculate the range. The range is the spread of the data from low to high. So just subtract 134 and 100 and you'll get 34. So the range of the data is 34 numbers. Second, we have to pick an appropriate number of classes for the data. So if we look at the steps for deciding on classes for frequency distribution, we want to try to keep the number of classes somewhere between 5 and 15. We don't want to create a frequency distribution that's too small or too large. Make sure none of the classes overlap each other. Don't leave out any numbers between the lowest and the highest even if nothing falls into a particular class. So when you start your classes you shouldn't have any gaps. Make sure the range of numbers included in each class is the same for each one. So for instance if you had a class that went from 20 to 30 your next class would have to start at 31 and it would also have to go up by 10. So it would go from 31 to 41. Then you would have 42 to 52. So be consistent with the range of numbers in each class and always start at the next number. Since they didn't give us any guidelines for the number of classes they want us to use here, we can come up with that on our own. Let's go ahead and try to do seven classes and let's see how many numbers that gives us in each. So just take the range and divide by the number of classes that you want. If you get a decimal, just round it. So 34 divided by 7 is four, approximately 4.8. So I'm going to go up by 5 with each lower class limit. So let's start with our frequency distribution table. The first step is to construct the classes and the classes represent record, high temps, in degrees Fahrenheit. So the classes, I'm just going to begin with 100. You can always start with the lowest number in your data set or you can round up or down. So I have 100 and remember I want to add 5 each time. Okay, so 100 to 105. Next I start at 106. So start at the next number. Add 5 to 106 and you get 111. My next class is going to start at 112. Add 5, you get 117. Then we have 118, and 118 plus 5 gives us 123. Then we have 124, plus 5 is 129. 130 to 135. Now this will be my last class because my highest number in the data was 134 and 134 is going to land in this last class. Notice that I do not end the class with 134. You have to be consistent with adding 5 each time. Okay, so one helpful thing to do with your frequency distribution is you could do tallies. Um, you do not have to do this. This is just going to help you with large data sets to organize the numbers and count how many are in each class. So a good strategy is to not hunt for numbers, but to just start with the first number and place it in its class with a tally mark. So 112 would be in this class. 100 would be in the first class. 127 would be in the this class here and then I'm going to place 120 which is going to be here. 134 is in the last class. 105 right here. 110 right here. So keep doing your tallies and then what you want to do is you want to add up those tally marks. 
Okay, so I've got all of the tally marks for all of the data, placing it in each class. One thing I want to mention is that we originally were going to try to create seven classes, but due to rounding, I rounded up and I went up by fives, and that gave me just six classes, which works just fine. So if for some reason you wanted to adjust it, you would just round it down and go up by fours if you really wanted to only have seven classes. Okay, so now we do the frequencies. So just count your tally marks and count by five. So I have five in the first class, five, 10, 11, 12 in the second, five, 10, 15, 16, and 17 in the third, five, 10, 14 in the next class, and then I have one, and then I have one. So when you see a frequency distribution, you typically don't see the tally marks and they just put the classes with the totals in each class. This is a grouped frequency distribution of the data. Now let's do the relative frequency distribution. So I'm just going to create a new column here and call it relative frequency. Relative means you're comparing the data, the total, to the whole. So the total in each class, you're going to compare it to the total data that you have. So if you add up all of the frequencies, you should get 50, since the data comes from 50 different states. And so with the relative frequency, I just want to convert each of these values to percentages. So for the first class, where I had five values, I would do five out of 50. So five divided by 50 is 0.1, and 0.1 would be 10%. My next class would be 12 divided by 50, and that's going to be 24% because it's the equivalent to 0.24. Then I have 17 out of 50, which is 0.34, or 34%. And then I have 14 divided by 50, which is 0.28, so 28%. 1 divided by 50 is 0.02, so 0.2. 02 would round to 2%, and so then I get 2% again. So if you add your percentages, you should get 100%. Um, due to rounding, if you had decimals, you could round to the nearest tenth of a percent, and you would be pretty close to 100% when you added those percentages up. So the frequency distribution is just going to be the classes with the frequency. The relative frequency distribution would be the classes with the percentages instead.